Hello again, everyone. I'm Jamie, and welcome back to Trick Bricks. Today, we're going to conclude Season 1 of the Wild West Retrospective Series by taking a look at the flagship set of the first wave, 6769 Fort Legorado. This classic was released in 1996, contains 687 pieces, and includes 10 minifigures. In the US, it retailed for $85. I wanted this set so bad as a kid, and I'm thrilled to be able to give it the attention it deserves here today. As you can see, Fort Legorado is pretty big. Its footprint, measured in studs, is 64 by 64. And in inches, it's about 20 by 20, so displaying this guy like you see here can be a bit of a challenge. But luckily, each of its four walls can easily be detached and rearranged to better fit your Lego shelf. Not only does this make display easier, it's going to make my job as a reviewer a piece of cake since we can take a look at each section individually. So, let's get to it. I'm going to start with what's probably the most lackluster part of the set, just this simple wall section. Even though there aren't really any features here, it's still pretty important since a fort with only three walls wouldn't make much sense. One thing this section does do is give us a look at most of the different pieces you'll be using when building this set. In the completed fort, there are a grand total of 23 log wall elements, 93 1x4 palisade bricks, and a whopping 148 1x2s of the same style, so hopefully you enjoy building with these. Like I said, this wall is fairly straightforward. Inside, you've got a ladder over here on the right, leading up to a platform that runs the entire length of the wall. Tons of room to pose minifigs up here, which is great. On the ground, you've got some open windows for soldiers to look out slash fire through, but that's about it. The only other feature this section has are two prickly bushes outside. The next section is quite a bit more interesting. According to the instructions, it's the left wall of the fort, although again, you can easily rearrange these into the configuration of your choice. Starting inside, we've got lots of room down here on the ground, just begging to be filled up with some barrels, guns, or a slew of other various accessories. And I have to say that's one of my favorite things about this set. It's super fun and easy to augment with pieces from your existing collection. On the left, we have this large gate, featuring something used at all three of the fort's entrances, a door bar that acts as a lock so the gate can't be opened until our soldiers want it to be. When you're ready to let someone in or out, simply remove this and the doors swing freely. Over here, there's another ladder leading up to the platform, although I'm not crazy about where they placed it since it basically runs you right into this wall here with just the most narrow ledge possible for your minifigs to climb onto. But you can easily remedy this by simply relocating the ladder. Again, lots of space up here for posting troops along the parapets, and you've even got this wall tower which adds some nice asymmetry and height variation to the build as a whole. There's a pair of torches here for light, one of these old style single piece flags with the cavalry insignia sticker applied to each side, and enough room for stationing a few lookouts. You'll have to imagine a way for them to get up here though, or add your own ladder since nothing like that is included. Same goes for this platform over here. If we take a look at the outside, we'll see that the fort itself is integrated into the rocky landscape, which I think was a very nice design choice, one which we'll see again in this set. There's another bush here, and it's sitting on a 2x3 brick that happens to be hiding something. A couple of gold coins. You could see this as somebody's hidden stash, or just some gold trapped in the rocks waiting to be mined. A pair of red birds flank the gate, and you've got just a hint more of the original landscape here. And now we've got the main entrance, which is fittingly the first thing you actually build if you're going by the instructions. Another cavalry flag tops everything off, and it flies between these two guard towers. They're one of the defining features of this set, I think, and each one sports some cattle horns on top, and enough room inside for a single lookout. Just below the flag is a sign that tells you exactly where you are, and as we've seen with so many LEGO sets from this era, it's a single sticker applied over two separate bricks. So once it's placed, you're not going to be using these blue 1x6s for anything else without ruining the decal. 
Two more birds maintain their post above the gate, which is again locked until we remove the door bar inside. Once opened, the entrance is plenty big enough to accommodate any of the wagons found in the western theme, which not only makes for a nice display scenario, but also a fun way for kids to combine sets for their various Wild West adventures. Continuing the symmetry of this section, we've got a pair of bushes and two large barrels for some bandits to hide in. Once we spin this section around, we'll see some more space down here for using your imagination, and another pair of ladders leading up to these platforms on each side. Again, I think these could benefit from relocation just for realism's sake, and if you have some extras in your collection, it might not hurt to add one to each of the guard towers as well. Unless, of course, your minifigures can fly. It's also worth mentioning that each of these red roof builds can be lifted up to make placing your lookouts a bit easier. I think this is a grand entrance to the fort, but I've saved my favorite section for last. The Cavalry Headquarters. Of the four portions of the fort, this one uses the most pieces and it's packing some pretty cool features. Up top, we've got another blue sign, and could it be? It is, a single sticker on a single brick. Imagine that. Below the red roof is a pair of windows, each with the closing shutters, which I love, and on the left here is a gray door leading out to this railed walkway. I think these fence pieces are a nice touch, since you obviously don't want any high-ranking soldiers tripping and falling off the ledge. Stairs lead us down to the ground, where we'll find the last entrance to the fort. This is the smallest of the three, and it seems to me like this is more of a back door, mainly for soldiers on foot, because anyone riding a horse through here is probably going to bump his head a few times. I do like the tunnel effect created by having these doors inset beneath the headquarters, and you've got some bars on the left side for seeing who's arrived without opening the gates, and the same thing on the right, although these bars are part of a very large jail cell plenty big enough to house Flatfoot Thompson and the rest of the Coyote Gang. Back over here, beneath the walkway, you may have noticed this black and blue box. To find out what it is, we'll need to go back outside the fort. As you can see, there's another window here, like we saw in the first wall section, but this one is partially blocked by the aforementioned box. It slides out easily thanks to some tile plates, and if we go ahead and open it up, inside we'll find a rifle. I'm not entirely sure what the idea is here, so let me know what you think in the comments. Continuing around to the back, we get a better look at the tunnel and the rear of the jail cell. In my mind, these bars are just begging to be pulled out by a few bandits on horseback. And over here, we'll see more of the landscape integration I mentioned earlier, on a much more grand scale. It looks like half of the jail cell is hewn out of solid rock, and I really like how the rest of this formation breaks up the monotony of the brown fort walls. For some reason, there's another rifle hidden out here, and you've also got a chimney jutting out of the rock peak. As for the actual headquarters, again, the roof can be lifted up to get a much better view of the interior. This isn't exactly how I would have imagined the most important office in Legoreto to appear, but these two comfy looking chairs and table do have a fun play function. I think the idea is for the cavalry colonel to invite one of the unwitting bandits over for a friendly drink or a game of poker, and as soon as he gets whatever information he needs, the table can be rotated and down goes Dewey, right into the jail cell. But there's also an alternative ending. If you turn the table the other direction, the colonel falls into the tunnel, locked out of the fort. How the tables have turned indeed. Once alone, Dewey Cheatham is left to discover the last secret of Fort Legoreto, a stash of gold hidden behind the fireplace. So now that we've seen each section, it's time to put it all back together. This is easily accomplished by squaring everything up and adding a 1x2 palisade brick to each of these corners. The finished structure definitely has a grandness to it, in the classic Lego sense. Now we're ready to flesh out the scene with everything else that's included in the set beginning with the minifigures. We've seen all of them before in their previous episodes of this retrospective series, so be sure to check those out for a look at each one in greater detail. But for those that have already seen them, I'm just going to run through these quickly and not bore you by repeating myself. For the good guys, we're given Deputy Dan and six cavalrymen, from the simple soldier all the way up to the colonel. Each one is equipped with some sort of weapon for defense, and a few of them are given horses to ride. And for a bit of tension, the whole Coyote gang is here as well. 
Flatfoot Thompson, Black Bart, and Dewey Cheatham. They're also packing heat, although from what we've seen of them, it's probably not in the name of defense. And lastly, we get this horse-drawn cart with cannon trailer. It's a fairly simple build, but a welcome addition nonetheless, because you can never have too many LEGO cannons. And as a bonus, this is the firing type, so it automatically gets some extra cool points. At the end of the day, despite its fairly simple nature, Fort Legorado is an absolute classic, and it's the perfect set for customizing and combining. There are so many things you could add to this set to fully flesh it out, like a bunkhouse, a stable, a weapons depot, etc, etc. There's plenty of real estate here to work with. I still think Gold City Junction may be my favorite set from the theme, but that isn't to say that I don't love this set, because I absolutely do. But for those interested in adding it to their collections, be warned. Fort Legorado comes with a price. A used copy of this set is generally going to run anywhere from $150 to $200, with sealed versions going for many times that. So is it worth the cost? Obviously, that's going to be a question only you can answer for yourself. But for me, I wouldn't be able to consider my Western collection complete without it. Luckily, I managed to find a partial set on eBay for about $50, and spent roughly $25 on BrickLink to complete it. So, as with any vintage set, if you're patient and not hesitant about finding creative ways to acquire all of the necessary parts and pieces, you can still get what you want and remain within your budget. But that about wraps it up for the Cowboys. I loved this theme as a kid, and I hope you've enjoyed revisiting it with me. It was definitely a trip down memory lane. And as I ride off into the sunset, I'll leave you with a promise that one day I will return to Legorado to take a look at all of the awesome sets that made up the Native American sub-theme. But in the meantime, I've got something very special brewing that I think you guys are really going to like, and I can't wait to share it with you. Stay tuned in the coming weeks for a special sneak peek of the next Trick Bricks retrospective series. But that's all I've got for you right now. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss some very exciting stuff that's looming on the horizon. So once again, this has been Jamie for Trick Bricks. Thanks for watching, and until next time, take care everybody, and play well!